What's good, everyone? Romero17 here. And as we know, UFC 269 is an extremely stacked card. So what a stacked card means a lot of showcases. Today, we're going to be showcasing one half of a very marquee featherweight fight. Josh Emmett, who's ranked number 7th in the featherweight division, set off the face against Dan Ige. Now, Josh Emmett, he's uh, on a three-fight win streak since his loss to Jeremy Stevens back in 2018. His uh, last victory over Shane Burgos was fight of the night. And um, aside from the Mursad Bektik win, which was pretty clear, the Johnson fight, Johnson he was losing against Johnson. Johnson looked amazing, and he managed to knock out Johnson in the third round. And Burgos, he, Burgos was beating um, Emmett as well, but that power is just a great equalizer, and Josh Emmett has power for days. He's also in both divisions. I forgot when he fought in a lightweight. Uh, it could have been, you know, I know he won like a lightweight title way back. In his uh, amateur days, I believe. And I think he fought Desmond Green. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, might have been in a uh, lightweight. But, regardless, he's in both weight classes. We're going to be able to showcase him both ways there. And one thing about Josh Emmett in this game, he's very, very, very good with his hooks. His hooks are, as I expected, level 4 lead hook, level 4 rear hook. His overhand should be a level 4 as well. His jab is more of a throwaway jab to kind of set up the rear hook. You see a lot in the Burgos fight. That's something that he tended to do. And once he got real comfortable, he started leading with the lead hook and getting into a lot of good body work. He mix, mixes in the takedown extremely well being an NAIA wrestler. And he's one of those uh, four stars. He's a very solid four star. You know, doesn't have too many of the long range kicking weapons. He does have the body teep and the lead body teep as well. And a switch kick too, which is, you know, pretty clutch, but all the other kicks, uh, you know, they leave a little to be desired. In the clinch, he's very solid. Everything's around a three-star, two-star in a good range. He has access to the power single leg, which can be done by holding L1 and forward on the left stick after you have a stamina advantage. So if you deny the first uh, double leg, you can switch over to a power single. Uh, the ground game is it's all basically wrestling transitions, not too many jujitsu stuff, and doesn't have too many submissions either. So really, your best bet is going to be like getting the rear naked choke or something along those lines. And he has level 3 boxing. So overall, pretty solid 4-star. He's meant to pressure. His perks are towards working a very solid ground game. And Bulldog buffs his block, so it allows you to stay in somebody's face. So without further ado, let's take this man over to rank championships and have some fun. A lot of respect to you, my friend. This guy, um, he was about to choose, I think, Volkanovski, but then he saw me choose Emmett, and he decided to go with Hooker, so that's very interesting. Shows a lot of confidence, too. Hooker's pretty good in, at featherweight, but not exactly the how he is in lightweight. Lightweight's definitely a little bit more durable. And him being the tallest, good to know. Better watch for the guillotine. Okay, no guillotine. Hey, yo, I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. Yo, <laughs> get go. <laughs> I was trying to back up. Wasn't letting like me. All right. So we're going to definitely try to make use of uh, Emmett's overhand, especially since we're going against a taller fighter. It's a lot harder for taller fighters to duck, so that overhand is going to be our best friend. There it is. Want to draw the guard low. Got him down. So you can set up the head strike. So we managed to take him down here with the turn. Emmett, um... You know, he's, uh, he's, that Ige fight is going to be very interesting. I know uh, after watching Chang Sung Jung kind of work Ige on the ground, I was kind of, not surprised, but kind of surprised at the same time, in a way. You know, obviously in the Barboza fight, Ige was looking for all the takedowns in the world against Barboza, and he was able to eke out that uh, split decision. I don't think he'll be able to take down Emmett. Emmett has proven to be very, very solid uh, fundamentally when it comes to stopping takedowns, for the most part, you know. And he definitely hits hard in Ig. I, I think he definitely hits hard in Ig. I could be wrong though. Could be wrong. You know, we never know. In this game, Emmett's chin isn't exactly too high. He has to do with like him getting rocked. I wish I would have stunned him a couple, like just back to back a couple of times. He does have good toughness. I think he should have a better recovery stat for sure. I don't think it should be an 88 just because he got KO'd by Jeremy Stevens, who, who hits hard, you know. He hit Jeremy hits hard. He's trying to play the game of he's constantly moving. I wish I could uh have a little bit more visual for like an L step in this game because uh, Josh Emmett really likes to hit that. I was watching a lot of film on him. And when he gets really moving, he gets real bouncy and tries to make sure he stays always outside of that lead leg. And then when he gets comfortable, he likes to hit this uh he'll lunge forward with like a hook. I'm trying to look for the perfect opportunity to try to hit that. 
and the close distance get the opponent's hands to come up and then he usually shoot off of that nice always punish the body you see him pull push the body okay we rock him oh dude <laughs> oh yeah that couldn't have gone any better I don't want to get subbed okay so he this guy I mean he was doing good I'm not gonna lie he was doing good from enough oh shit oh, I thought I denied that he was doing good from a defensive point of view, uh, counter-offensive point of view. He was doing a good job with those uh, uppercut hooks and whatnot. You know, especially against a shorter fighter, those uppercut hooks do a lot of work. We're out of here. But uh, he tried. He got a little bit too greedy on that body shot and tried to follow apart. And that level three uppercut, on top of that 96 power, it's it's very very difficult. Plus the overhand right after. So round was close up until that point. So we definitely secured it there. And for those of you who don't know. Uh, Josh Emmett, he's been dealing with a lot of adversity. You know, he, he's coming back off of a, a very long layoff after all uh, the Burgos fight. I believe he tore his ACL, fully tore it, uh, MCL as well. And he was able to get the win at, during the fight as that happened, which is oh fuck, went to the body, dude. <laughs> Jesus, let's go for the Jerry Stevens elbow. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Well, that kind of that kind of messes up my flow a little bit. I was I was getting in the zone there, but uh, okay, got him out of there. But um, in that fight against uh, he, he's just taking off a long layoff, and that layoff may have been a good thing for him, giving his body a time to recover. I know he's been also dealing with the death of his father. Don't know if I, I don't recall if I saw seeing something about his brother as well passing away, but whatever it is, you know, it's never easy, especially to get back in there when a loved one goes away. So, you know, everybody has their story. Everybody has um. Their bit, their fair share of uh, adversity there, but being that Josh Emmett, that uh, emotional loss, especially losing a, a parental figure like that, on top of being the sideline for so long, you know he wants to go out there and give a big old show. Man, look like Baraka. Man, look like Baraka, and he wants to take some hearts out. So, I, I do wish him the best of luck, just given the context of everything that's going on for him. And for both gentlemen, I hope they can deliver and get themselves like a performance of night or fight a night bonus because both of those guys definitely deserve it. This fight in lightweight, I think uh, Gaethje would knock out I mean in lightweight for sure. I, that, Gaethje just hits a little bit harder, I feel. And uh, in lightweight, Emmett's power is just a little bit less. So, we'll see what type of gate he is. So, you go with a four piece with no setup. Yeah, this is not a this is not a very intelligent gauge. He's kind of hanging back, holding low block. I just want to see what he has in mind. Is, is it three round fight? Yeah, that's not good. He's going for double elbows. Well, Marshall Martin just dropped the video up. Uh, Talking about how players that uh, confuse being technical with being passive. And I, I don't know if this is what this guy's trying to do. But this is not how you want to use Justin Gaethje. You got level 5. Uh, ca you, there you go. Use the calf kick. Use the low kick. You know. But hanging back and allowing me to take turns. Is getting into my own flow. It's kind of not the way to go about it. Because I'm going to see what you're doing, bro. <laughs> oh, love it. It's forcing the pull. Look, all I'm doing is stepping in and out of range. That's something that uh, Emmett was doing well against. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Nice random, random flying E. Ah. Tough is Gage. Gage has this perk called Wake Up Call. So whenever he gets uh, a lower health, he actually gets uh, an extra boost to his health stat. So it actually makes it very dangerous to exchange with Gage because you could be. Nice combo. You could be in the middle of an exchange with him and then uh, that perk will kick in. And then, oh, oh shit! Thank God that was a cross. But Emil has some pretty good body work as well. Hence the level four body hook. Let's go. Let's get that in there. It's just so, okay. Keep yourself on the fence, then, brother. And I'm I'm wondering uh, if he's going to. I know it's, it's going to have obviously be a three round fight. So okay, let's try to take it out here. No, okay. With uh, Ige, I'm, I'm wondering if the goal is going to be maybe try to set the tone early, try to take Ige down early, wear on him a little bit, and then have Ige feel your power. 
it down. Because I think that would be a pretty good game plan. Ega does have pretty good jiu-jitsu. He was able to survive a couple submission attempts from the zombie as well. Um, obviously, Josh Emmett in the game, he doesn't have too many uh, submissions. So, I don't kind of just tells me that he does not do it too much. Too much jiu-jitsu in there in the ring. But for MMA wrestling, it's pretty good. Bit like that. Ah, uh, oh, come on. I was having to rock the... Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Your face had too many things. Okay, no. You like that? I hope y'all like that. And, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God, if you were any smarter. If you were any smarter, you would have head kicked me. But uh, he also likes... Emmett also likes that inside slip check hook. He uh, was landing a lot of that against uh, Michael Johnson, I believe, around two. He's definitely falling in love with it. Dropped him. Yeah, that's a good round, good round for me. And when you have somebody with, I think, uh, what was it, the uh, Ricardo Lamas fight? I think uh, Lamas stepped in with like a, a leg kick, and then Emmett planted and just ripped two hellacious hooks. And just as Emmett was loaded up on his own strike, he just got caught. His hands were down on the other side. And Emmett, he missed one strike. Oh, my bad, bro. <laughs> my bad. I was just, my bad, bro. My bad. But uh, he just swang these two hooks and just one miss. And the other one just sent homeboy straight to Valhalla. Oh, my God, bro. Jesus Christ, man. Yo, Emmett's nice with it, bro. Oh, why would you go for the fly knee? This is not the place for a fly knee. Oh, try that. I forced it. I was a little bit out of range. Emmett is a little bit shorter. Oh, let's go. Get the lunge in. Yes! Let's go. Off the lunge and into the three-piece body combo. He was too rocked. He tried to strike when he was rocked. His short-term stamina was definitely shot there. Nice. Back-to-back -back finishes. Back-to-back -back finishes. Nice. Just how I like it. Just how I like it. Hopefully, y'all enjoy it. I want to try um, doing more of those lunging strikes with uh, fighters that you like to use to set lunging strikes and then setting up into bigger combinations. Just to see how much it can do. But the body work was key. is very pivotal in this fight. Also against... Uh, uh, Eddie, Eddie Alvarez had a lot of success against Justin Gage with the body shots, and as well as Michael Chandler. So it kind of took a little bit of a note from there against uh, Gage, this Gage here, but nice, nice, good, good win so far. Coop, we trust Max Holloway. Don't get me wrong, Max Holloway, his chin isn't as high as it is in featherweight, but he is still a problem in this weight class. I mean, he gave Dustin Poirier. He lost those first two rounds against Dustin, and then, uh, oh, okay, this guy is. Oh, 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 oh. That was a good pull, and he didn't follow up. Hold on. Uh huh. Gosh, my hands up. Alright. He, uh, the, the way that Max Holloway is able to cut the angles that he does. And then force you to throw back extremely hard at him to get him off of you. It's exactly how he makes guys tired. Plus, he has that legendary chin. And he legitimately, there's a, go back and watch the fight. He had uh, Poirier, like, looking like Aldo in that third round. Just fighting back, fighting back. Because he was slowing down. And then what gave uh, Dustin that, that little extra life, that second win there, was that, uh, that check hook. Because he was playing everything into those punches and i remember being at the buffalo wild Wings where i used to work at i was like don't let this motherfucker i was like don't let this motherfucker trick you <laughs> like this guy no he won't get tired <laughs> you mash his face up he he eats shots that are like fight enders that drop people and then you're like jesus i put my all into knocking this guy out and then he just won't go away but speaking on that same context exactly why i gotta grapple here you want to, whenever you go against a Max Holloway player, I like to say that, uh, obviously, unless you know the guy or something, almost everything goes. Uh, you got to play You gotta play a little bit more dirty because Max is just, it's one jumping back spin kick away, one knee elbow away from rocking you, one jumping flying knee from rocking you. You got you to gotta pull out all the stops. So, especially in the grappling, the grappling's going to be the best bet to constantly wear at Max because on the feet, 
He's a little bit too fast for Emmett. Uh, I can feel the difference in the speed trying to exchange with him. And in this game, power is one thing, but speed is a little bit more important. If you land first, you're more likely to win the exchange, especially when you're in the proper range. So he's gonna, we're gonna work very methodical. We have five rounds to work. Fortunately, Emmett does not have subs I would like from here, but we're gonna just try to work him in the crucifix. I don't want to press. I don't want to. Ah, so I've been wanting to talk. I don't want to like overdo it too much in crucifix and you know let them escape. But this is a good way to kind of just burn at the clock too. Mm, okay, you got that. Thought denied it, but he's not. There's about 40 seconds left, and he's not really. Sh I understand he's not showing too much urgency to get up, but uh, oh. Oh, that rock him. Set off as low. A lot of times, some players, it's kind of weird. Like, there's 20 seconds left. You got no reason to be faking down there, bro. Should you go for the posture? Nah. I'm going for the posture. Pablo, what are you doing, bro? Alright, let's so go first round. We got him down early. So that we got secured that round. We just can't. We can't afford to let Max tee off on us because once he starts to go and he has that level five jab, level five cross, the level three uh, strikes in other locations, and then all the spinning stuff and the boxing combos. He's just extremely solid. But look at that. See the the power. That's where the power stat matters in winning exchanges and single shots. So he landed at uppercut first, but I was able to go through and land that uh, overhand. So that's real good. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. That was so good, but fuck. Oh, he didn't. He's not throwing the pull uppercut. He's waiting. He's waiting for me to move my head, and then he's hitting me as my head is returning back to the center line because he knows. Okay, I like that. That's different. I'm gonna have to feed you your own fucking elbows though, because I can't just let you spin on me. But I gotta be very careful because you could throw an elbow in the correct range, and sometimes the game will treat it like you're a little bit too far. And if you eat a jab, cross, or max when you're at low short term stamina, it's just not gonna be good. Ugh, I thought he was gonna go one two, but let's take him down. That's what we gotta do. We gotta slow this hurricane down, bro. Got three minutes to work. Let's work, work. Probably should work a little bit more towards the body. That's the thing I always say when you go against a uh, Max Holly play. Legs is actually pretty, even though his leg stat isn't exactly the best. Um, I would definitely say that trying to work the body is your best option. And then have that open up the head because his chin trying to take that alone. Is, is a lot harder unless you get him at peak vulnerability. So we just got to play the long game here. For the grapplers, I know you guys enjoy this. I like to work the grapple advantage and just get to the postures. Playing a little bit safe. Nice, he went to the full guard. He's going to get up from here. Yes, he is. Alright. He's back to the wizard. Back to the wizard. Back to the wizard. <sighs> okay. I thought he wasn't going to do that three times in a row, but I was wrong. I'm going to try to use a little bit of the... Oh, my God. I, I got to stop falling for that. That's really smart, though. I like that. I don't know if it's intentional or maybe something that he just kind of picked up on. Rock him. It's that power. That 94 power. And plus, the fact that those strikes are at level four it just helps me out so much. Those hands never leave where they're supposed to be. And if you do that, most times oh. you don't stop. Let's hope pull it. Oh, there's me. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, I should have not pulled that goddamn knee body. That would have rocked the shot in. Oh, rocked him. It's the power. It's that power differential. I was just close to throwing over and getting flashed. Wow. Okay. Rocky start, but 
managed to pull away there and get our own some damage off there. We gotta dominate the, the uh, pocket exchanges with the hooks. First and foremost, we gotta dominate the pocket exchanges with the hooks. Alright, there it is. We're gonna catch him when he's pulling. Body. Just one hooks. There he is. He <sighs> backs up right out of range. Mm. That hurt him a little bit. He's very, very. Oh shit! <laughs> that, that was fast. That was fast. I don't know why that was so fast. But it's okay. All right. Denied that. Last time shoot take then after a big move. So would have preferred a spear, but just would have looked a little bit better aesthetically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. Oh, man. This guy's got elbows Just gonna use wear on the chin. Side saddle is a very fuck. I wish that uh, in this game it allowed you to use your legs as a for the guy on the bottom to try to like get out. Or try to hook the Emmett's uh, back leg. I know uh, for the arm triangle, if you attempt the arm triangle and to get out very early, then that's the animation that happens, but I want that to be an option for the guy on the bottom, because you can only go one or two ways in both Crucifix here, this poor guy's name, Mold, and a side saddle. Oh, boy. Dude, hey, this is, that's, this is bad for him. Very, very bad. Uh, okay, he got it. Not letting you pass them out. So I'm not gonna let you go to Sprawl. He's hurt. Oh, lands an elbow, didn't open him up, but very well. Didn't like that one. <sighs> Smart man. So I'm in 20. So he needed to be more effective in this situation. Come on. Certainly effective tonight. Many people have gone away from this style of fighting. Bro, if I were you, I'd get up. <laughs> if you want to win this round, oh, okay. That's your me. I thought he was going to go for it. I was this close to ducking. Oh, he goes to spins. Alright, we're going to help. We're going to try to pull counter a shot and we can. Alright. He denied it. He denied that one too. Oh my shit! No, no. Jesus, that was impressive as hell, bro. Ah, oh, fucking cross. No. Woo! Oh, right out, dead in center, with the elbow. I, got a, I like the slip elbow that uh, I think uh, Cater did against the his bike. Woo! <laughs> he said, well, please. Ah, uh, that shit is, I ain't gonna hold you though. It's a little bit too strong for my liking. I mean, granted, I wore beat up on his face a little bit with the hooks and the elbows on the ground and everything, but uh, I've seen less. I've seen more not get a flash kill. But you know what? I'm content with that. Hopefully, you guys are too. That is going to be it for the UFC 269 showcase for Josh Emmett. Hopefully, he pulls out a big dub. And if Danny Ige gets it done, and Danny Ige gets it done, uh, you know, best of luck to both gentlemen. And we're, we're going to definitely be in for a treat because we have a lot, lots and lots of action going in on that card. Mero 17, hopefully you guys enjoyed the showcase. We got more coming. Take care and have a good night. I'm out of here.